So I made a video recently about some random questions that I had about the world of Wheel of Time. And the thing about making a video like that is that while you're making it, it makes your brain start spinning in that sort of vein, in that area. And literally, while I was editing that video, I was thinking of more questions. So here goes. Here are some more questions I have about the world of Wheel of Time. But before I jump into it, spoiler warning, full spoilers for the entire series. If you have not finished the Wheel of Time again, sorry, my channel is just, it's pretty, tends to be pretty spoilers out, so sorry. This video, not a good one for you. But, you know, finish the series, come back, watch it, let me know if you have answers to these questions. All right, let's jump into it. The first question I have, I <laughs> I actually made a meme about it, and I featured, the meme was featured on the uh, meme off I did with Malkir Talks on the uh, What a Holiday charity stream, but uh, for, if you didn't get to see that, here is the meme. It's a couple in bed, You've got the, you know, man staring off, he's thinking about something, and the woman looks at him suspiciously thinking, huh, I bet he's thinking about other women, but turns out the man is actually thinking, how do Merdral learn English? And yeah, that's the question. How do Merdral learn English? And okay, before I go on, yes, I know it's not English, it's whatever the common tongue is, okay? But putting common tongue in the meme, it just isn't funny, and I think the point stands whether it's English or not. We know that Trollocs have their own language, and Murdral are born to Trollocs, so how do they learn to speak the common tongue? The only answer I can think of is that they are sent to the town. You know that creepy, awful town that we learn about in the later books, right? So that's the only answer I can think of, but then that just makes me have more questions in my head. So okay, you're a lady Trolloc, and you give birth to this like weird, eyeless, egg-headed creature. Do you just send it to the town or do people or creatures or whatever come and get it from you? And in the town, who is raising the Murdral? Like, is that why humans are there in the first place? Could that actually be the reason that the town was founded? Is that the purpose of the town was to raise these crazy, mysterious Murdral that just suddenly started appearing? Because we know that that was random. It was not intentional. Okay, <laughs> now my brain is like going down this rabbit hole, right? So let's imagine that you're a dark friend and you're assigned to the town. I, I can't imagine this is a plum assignment. You know, the town does not seem like a great, pleasant place to live. But okay, you're there in the town and then you're given a baby Murdral to raise. Do you grow attached to it in any way? Like how long do they take to grow? Oh my God, that, do they, like, do they have an accelerated growth rate? Do, or are you raising a Murdral for like 18 years until it's ready to go off to murder college or whatever? Do you grow attached to the Murdral in that time? Is there some sort of weird familial bond between the Murdral and their adoptive parents? And okay, so these Murdral need to not only learn how to, you know, speak, they need to learn how to read because we know that there's a script, right? So they know how to read Trolloc script and human script, which means that there's going to be like a time when you're teaching them where their instructor is going to be like, oh no, baby Murdral, that's not a B, that's a D. And the Murdral is going to get angry and they're super strong. They've got like evil super strength. Do they straight up murder their parents or do they hold it back and restrain that because they sort of evilly love their parents? Because murder would probably be their instinct, right? Like, I don't know. It's a weird thing to think about. And actually that brings me to another thing because we know that the Trollocs have their own script, right? So that means that the Trollocs are learning how to read and write. So do the Trollocs have schools? What? <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. Trollocs are canonically lazy, so I can't imagine them going to school. So actually, okay, my headcanon doing this now is that it's only the super smart Trollocs they go to school. Like, Trollocs like Narg, right? They get to go to school. That's that's my new headcanon about who's doing the reading and writing among the Trollocs. I, I don't know. But okay, back to the Murdral and their education. Being sent to the town to live would suck, right? But we know of a population of people that probably wouldn't mind it so much. And that's people who've been turned against their will. They kind of sort of lose their humanity, right? They're vacant behind the eyes, but like love evil all of a sudden. But only channelers can be turned against their will. And there's a regular supply 
of turned channelers, the Aiel. Once the Aiel started sending their male channelers to the Blight, the town had a regular supply of male channelers who could live for a super long time, loved evil, probably content to live in the town, and know how to read and write and speak in the common tongue. So they're the ones raising the Murdral. This is my headcanon. The Murdral teachers and adoptive parents are the evil Aiel with the pointy teeth. I guess I answered my own question. The next question on my list kind of grew out of this question because trying to imagine the Murdral and Trollocs learning to read and write, I kept trying to picture child versions of them and I couldn't help but wonder, are baby Murdral and baby Trollocs, are they cute? You know, do they have the oversized heads and the big eyes? Well, the Trollocs, the Murdral don't have eyes. But anyway, do they have those? I kind of want to see it but I literally cannot think of a single reason for the show to show it to us, so I doubt I will ever know, but I kinda wanna. Okay, so this brings us to a more complex question, and this question grew out of, actually, okay, no, it was like more lifted directly from a conversation that I had a while back on Discord, and that is, can Trollocs be rehabilitated? Now, for some reason, our conversation on Discord didn't really extend to other shadow spawn. I think because Murdral are just so evilly, like they're so intrinsically evil in the books that, you know, we don't think about them, but Trollocs seem somehow less bad. So that was the conversation that we had. One member of my Discord, Shantanae, who identifies as white Aja and, uh, you know, likes to think about things very logically, she pointed out that with the Dark One sealed, uh, now in the Dark One's prison, he is no longer touching the pattern, can't influence a pattern at all. Perhaps the Trollocs are outside of the influence of the Dark One. Maybe they wouldn't be evil or as evil anymore. And to be honest, given that they were intentionally created to be evil, I think that it's unlikely. But I think ethically speaking, it is something that absolutely should be investigated. And as someone who identifies as brown, agile wise, I think it would be worth studying if it can be done safely, of course, because we know, like, as we already have discussed, the Trollocs have a language and a writing system. They are intelligent, sentient beings and just exterminating them without taking the time to investigate this feels unjust. And I know that they were intentionally created beings, right? So that would be, make us less inclined to think of them as being on par with humans, but so were the Nim. The Nim were intentionally created beings. And even there's some theorizing in the fandom that the Aiel were genetically engineered or modified in some way. Their sentience to me has nothing to do with how they came into being. And their sentience means that, that this is something that absolutely should be investigated because, well, exterminating them would be genocide. And genocide is just not something that I typically approve of. I do think it's unlikely that they can be rehabilitated, but okay, mental exercise. What if it's possible? What then? Okay, we know that the Myrdral, who in this mental exercise that I'm doing, the Myrdral are not re rehabilitatable. I don't know what word I'm looking for there, but it's not possible with the, with the Myrdral in my head canon. So what are we doing then? Because the, the Myrdral just happen sometimes. So are we just killing them when they're born? That... That feels wrong. And uh, then, of course, we know the Trollocs breed a lot. If I'm remembering correctly from the like big white book of ba bad art, the female Trollocs just really love being pregnant. So they have lots of little Trolloc babies. And Trollocs are carnivores, right? Like they, we've added a new creature to the food chain that can live among the food chain legitimately, but then we've actually removed a major food source from them, which is us. They can no longer eat us. So adding them into the, the food chain is just gonna be an environmental disaster. I think the best solution that could be found would possibly be to send them to a mirror world, but then that feels also unethical because you're just adding a predator to another world that probably is not ready for them. And that also feels morally dubious. This is a quagmire. I don't know what the answer would be if they were found to be salvageable. I do, however, think that it is unlikely, given what we know about their creation. So these moral quandaries 
are probably nothing, but it is just, it's an interesting mental exercise. So that was just a whole bunch of questions about Shadow Spawn. Let's move on to something more wholesome, the Ogier. But I'm about to make it a lot less <laughs> wholesome. Okay, so in the Shadow Rising, there's this moment that actually kind of makes me tear up every time where Loyal is a hero, right? And he, he saves a bunch of children and, and women uh, from being attacked by the Trollocs. And it's said afterwards that if he were human, women all throughout the stone be trying to marry him. And some might try anyway. So, question. Has anyone ever tried? You know, like, okay, just to give you a glimpse, how this is originally written on my notes is just Ogier kink? Question mark? Have Ogier and humans ever tried doing it? Do our parts fit together? Given the spectrum of human sexuality and the, you know, rule 34 of it all, you just know that somewhere on Earth, some human has seen an Ogier and had pants feelings about them. <laughs> okay, I, rec <laughs> I recently heard someone describe my channel as professional and intellectual, and here I am talking about pants feelings about the Ogier. But okay, <laughs> seriously, the Ogier have been on Earth for at least 3,000 years at the time of the writing of these books. Just knowing humans as I do, I cannot conceive of no one having ever tried. And I say tried because while I can't conceive of there not having been humans who had a ogier kink throughout this long history, I actually can conceive of the ogier just having no sexual interest in humans whatsoever. Like just them looking at humans and being like, Oh, so cute. And then just not caring or thinking about them sexually. So it would be a one-sided thing. But I am still <laughs> curious about it. <laughs> anyway, moving on from this nonsense. <laughs> the last question I have for this video is probably the most serious question. Like, it's the most real one. All of these other questions are questions that sort of assume that the world of Wheel of Time is real and that there would be answers. They're not questions about the plots of the books at all, really. But this question is, it's directly related to the plot of the books. I've talked about this before, but one of the things I, that I think sets the Wheel of Time apart from a lot of other books is how well it stands up to a reread, you know? I would actually say that the Wheel of Time is more enjoyable the second time you read it and then like the third time, you know, it's probably a uh, law of diminishing returns on there at some point but it just it's better when you know the story when you read it the second time because you see the depth to it you know it's things that were in the background they come into focus it's like the difference between standard def and hd or 4k i imagine i don't know really about that but the question i'm about to ask is a rare instance of where something in the wheel of time is actually worse on a reread so okay here's the moment it's in the Dragon Reborn, and Perrin, um, Moraine, Lan, and Fael have just been attacked by a bunch of Grey Men, and then Moraine goes off to do some investigating, and uh, she comes back and she says, there's a forsaken ruling in Ilion, and it's, it's Samael. And when you read this the first time, at this point in the story, we don't fully understand the abilities of the Aes Sedai. We don't know Moraine's abilities. So our assumption probably is, at the, the first reading, that she went off and she did something magical and then she came back and told us what she found in her magical dealings. But on a reread, knowing what Moraine and Aes Sedai in general are capable of, how the hell did she get this information? I, I honestly have no theories here. Like, every guess that I can make, every theory I have, feels incredibly unsatisfying. I'm assuming as a blue, Blue Aja, she has tons of eyes and ears throughout the city of Ilion, right? So she went and asked them. But I cannot imagine her, you know, rolling up to one of her eyes and ears and them going, Oh, hey, Mistress Alice. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. There's a forsaken ruling in Ilion. Like, that, that doesn't make any sense. Nobody else really knew that the seals were weakening. Nobody knew the forsaken were out. How would they know that? They wouldn't. So... The only possible explanation then is that she went to a bunch of them and they all gave her different pieces and she put the pieces together 
and came up with, huh, these pieces fit together, and I guess there's a forsaken ruling in Ilion? But that's just it. It's a guess. It's a guess that she says as if it's a fact, which doesn't make any sense, given the three oaths. But okay, let's say that it's a guess that she's so sure of that she she thinks it's a fact and thereby, you know, gets around her oaths. How the hell does she know that it's Samael? Samael is not using his real name, because no, he's not. It's a known fact that they don't know much about the Forsaken, like they don't really know what they look like even, so even if they described him to her, she's not going to recognize him from a physical description. And I, I can't imagine any of her eyes and ears giving her enough information to put together that it is this specific Forsaken. That, that doesn't make any sense. So, so what did she do? Did she break into the palace and then overhear him saying like, I, Samael, am now going to lay out my nefarious plot? I, I, <clears throat> that doesn't make any sense at all. We do know that she does have that uh, eavesdropping, that eavesdropping trick that she can do. So, okay, maybe she did that. But again, unless he was talking about himself in the third person, there is no way for her to know that A, he's a forsaken, and B, that he's that specific forsaken. This is the rare instance in this series where more knowledge makes things worse. None of the explanations I can come up with for how Moraine has this information are at all satisfying to me. So yeah, here's some more random questions that I have about the Wheel of Time. And I'm sure I'm going to come up with more because putting my brain in this headspace just, just gets my wheels spinning. So how about you? What random questions do you have? Let me know in the description below. And uh, if you like, join my Discord, actually. It's a really fun place to you know talk about Wheel of Time and other nerdy pursuits. And if you like these videos, please consider checking out my Patreon. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. I am so amazed and thankful to the patrons that I have right now. It means so much to me that you want to support me making these videos. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, as always, like, subscribe, and stick around for the art credits. Bye!